hey, back for the fourth video. Uh, again, we are dealing with what builds societies and where do they build them. And what we talked about last time was us as pack animals, um, how we evolved to be physically, and how we evolved to be cognitively. Today, what we're going to deal with is, uh, or in this video, what we're going to deal with is how we evolved emotionally and uh, to conceptualize your life, which kind of bites to think about this it, this way, but I'd argue that it absolutely um, is worthwhile for you to think about not just this as a conceptual uh, exercise, but about your life as being a big experiment in what happens when you take an animal that evolved to be like this and put it in a society, in an environment that it is not evolved to deal with. All right, so to get there, let's start with uh, talking about emotionally. The way you evolved emotionally is, first of all, to have the, what I'm going to call the inside out emotions. And by that, what I mean is literally the Pixar movie Inside Out. It had the emotions of joy, sadness, anger, fear, and disgust. Now, evolutionary psychologists and anthropologists do argue to some degree about whether this is a comprehensive list or not. For our purposes, this is fine. I, like, I don't, we don't need to have more than this. It's possible that we have more emotional equipment, that there's more nuance than, um, than just these, but this is good enough for us for right now. Um, the two that I want to draw your attention to, not because they're necessarily more important, but I do want to just kind of, uh, because it helps us understand, again, the way we are, uh, the way our society is a big experiment. I want to draw our attention to the idea of sadness and of fear. I'll put both of them in boxes. Sadness. What I want to draw your attention to is sadness exists because evolutionarily it allows us to bond with each other. Remember, we lived in groups of only about 100 people. So those bonds um, connecting us, especially when you think if we are not successful hunting and gathering for a certain period of time, um, people start to get sick and people start to die. Us having strong bonds with each other is really important. Now, we're going to talk about this when we talk about the big experiment, but just to foreshadow a little bit, um, you live in a society right now where people feel more isolated than they ever have before. We have tons and tons of ways of connecting with each other in terms of social media, but people are lonelier than they maybe ever have been, um, which is just, again, suggesting that what we have going on in terms of the societal environment that you live in right now is an experiment. You're not designed to live in this. The second one is fear. Fear, we evolved to have to draw our attention to immediate problems to solve. If you're on the savannas of Africa and you see a cheetah and you don't feel fear, you're dead. We evolved to feel fear as a survival mechanism. Now, what I want to draw your attention to about this in terms of our big experiment is that the stress that you feel as a student on and off for semesters at a time is insane evolutionarily. You should not feel that level of fear. Your fear, the, the chemicals, the hormones that exist in you to make you feel fear are supposed to turn on, turn, I'm sorry, turn on when you see a cheetah or a lion or some kind of predator. And then you either escape and they turn off or you're dead and they turn off. But hopefully you escape and they turn off. The problem for you, for me, for anybody who's living in modern society is your fear turns on about things that are way distant in time or in space from you. Um, we're not designed to deal with that. And so if you turn on those that fear mechanism and leave it on for 
um, hours and days and weeks, that ravages your body. Again, you are not evolved to deal with this sort of society. We are in an experiment. What happens when you turn fear on for weeks or months or years? What you find out is it sucks. You end up sick. You end up depressed. You end up unhappy. All right. That takes us to the end of, I'm sorry, it takes us to the end of how we evolved emotionally. So let's, uh, let's get at the idea of this big experiment. And this is what I want to draw our attention to. In terms of a big experiment um, for our society, our lives are not structured based on evolutionary reality. This reality that we talked about, that we are social, that we have certain physical things that we evolved to be good at, um, that we had certain cognitive things and certain emotional um, apparatus that we evolved to have. Um, right now, we're put in an environment that doesn't, that doesn't take advantage of these things. Um, we, are, we have a life that is structured not based on that evolutionary reality. So what we have is in our lives, in our daily lives, we have tons of strangers. We have we have um, tons of inequality. We have an economic system based on competition. We have lives that are mostly indoors. We um, have tons of long term problems. Um, uh, which um, leads to long term stress. Now, I don't want to make the argument that so we should go back to being hunter gatherers. We shouldn't go back to being hunter gatherers. And even if we should, which we shouldn't, that's not going to happen. Um, what I do want to suggest, though, is that, that and, and it's not even that these things are necessarily bad. It's that they are not what we evolved to be good at. We're in an environment that is not based on our evolutionary reality. And as such, it is not designed with your happiness or my happiness or anybody's happiness in mind. If we were to design a society with our happiness and our success in mind, it would be based at least to some degree on evolutionary reality. We don't have that. So the last idea that I want you to think about is that where we go from here in terms of dealing with the society that you live in is that it really is a big experiment. To the extent that you feel miserable, it's not necessarily your fault. Your society was not based, was not set up to make you happy. It was not set up based on what you evolved to be good at. Now, that doesn't mean you can just blame other people. That's the reality. Those are the cards you've been dealt. They're the cards that I've been dealt. We have to make the best of it. But being able to understand, okay, so. What I've got when I wake up in the morning is not set up for me to be successful. And yet, I've got to find a way to be successful in spite of that. To know that going in arms you in a way that you weren't armed before. You can start to make choices. You can start to recognize, okay, so I'm being influenced in ways that are really against what would probably be natural for me. Do I want to do that or do I want to make another choice? One of the ideas that we are going to come back to over and over and over again is society is pushing you in one way, and it's pushing you pretty relentlessly. It is that water, that current that you're swimming in. 
but you always have a choice. What we in sociology call your agency. Your agency is your ability to make a choice. The issue is, and the reason that I think this is the most important class you'll take, is if you know that you're being pushed, you can make a choice to say, you know what, I don't think so. I don't think this is good for me. It doesn't mean your life just works out beautifully. But at least you've got a chance at structuring your life in a way that might make you more happy than this experiment is set up to make you. All right, that's thoroughly depressing and kind of deep. Think about it. Ask me questions if you want to. I will see you in the next video.